In this session, we are going to discuss the middle action of the short story, The Lumber Room. Now we know the first part of the short story. Nicholas rejects his breakfast, the wholesome bread and milk, complaining about a frog in it. Ah. And there is an argument between him and his aunt and other elders. And at the end of this argument, Nicholas points out the elders are not always correct. And they themselves are not sure about, they have no assurance about their belief. Nicholas happily, proudly mm, mentions this fact. And as a result of this, the aunt arranges a picnic for other children, the good children, the good children, and Nicholas, as a disgraceful boy, he has to stay at home. And the children will go to Jackborough Beach. Right. In this middle section, we further see how Anne's punishment on Nicholas how one punishment on Nicholas turns upon her boomerang. That punishment becomes a punishment for this woman. Nicholas is very smart and genius and tactful. The aunt has no way of winning in this conflict with Nicholas. Nicholas is very, very tactful, skillful. Okay, let's read that part. Let's read that part. So it's uh, boy cousin and girl cousin. And is quite uninteresting younger brother. Now, for the first time, for the first time, Saki introduces other child characters in this short story. Boy cousin, girl cousin. Ah. And also Nicholas' younger brother, younger brother, right? Now they are the other children. Uh, they are the other children under Nicholas' aunt's control, authority. Now they are the children who are rewarded, who are rewarded with a picnic, who are rewarded with a picnic to Jackborough Beach for their good behavior at the breakfast table. They were to be taken to Jackborough Sands. Sands simply means the beach that afternoon. And he was to stay at home. Now Aunt invents this punishment for Nicholas' disgraceful, disrespectful behavior at the breakfast table. His cousin's aunt, it means the mother of the girl cousin and boy cousin. It means there is another cousin, there is another aunt in this house. Uh, 
this aunt who insisted who thoroughly seriously mentioned by an underline unwarranted stretch of imagination underline uh, this phrase is very important what is the idea unwarranted not sure unwarranted means not sure no assurance no assurance of what no assurance of imagination imagination means thinking ah uh, creating through mind now these aunts they have imagination write a comment but this imagination is not sure a uh, stretch of series stretch means series mm. a long line of imagination but they are not warranted there is no warranty no uh, sure no assurance in this imagination ah uh. unpractical imagination that is a simple idea this imagination is not practical now you have various thinking thoughts ideas uh, but that is not practical uh, you imagine to go to moon and start a business there go to the moon and start a business but that is an imagination without any practical nature right now the right criticizes the aunts the elders in this house they are full of imagination but not practical and style in herself ah uh, following that aunt his aunt it means nicholas aunt also had hastily quickly invented the jagborough expedition ah uh, this is not a picnic this is an expedition hmm. expedition what do you mean by expedition expedition a serious journey in discovering something in discovering new things a serious journey expedition ah uh, expedition into ah uh, the singaraja rainforest the expedition into the himalayas likewise the expedition into the arctic hmm. expedition a serious journey a research ah now this picnic to jagboro beach is also a kind of expedition for those children ah in order to what is the result or what is the expectation ambition of this expedition to impress on nicholas to impress ah uh, to make nicholas understand impress to force impress means to force nicholas to understand the delights delights what do you mean by delights some mental happiness mm, happiness sense of happiness that he had justly forfeited he had justly means rightly forfeited lost he lost this happiness because of his disgraceful conduct conduct means behavior because of his disgraceful conduct at the breakfast table ah uh, now aunt invents this picnic to hurt nicholas feelings 
to hurt Nicholas' feelings. Uh, underline, it was her habit. Now, writer here mentions a common nature, common quality of this woman, Nicholas Ann. It was her habit. She has a habit. Hmm. Some natural quality. Habit means natural quality. Whenever one of the children fell from grace, fell from grace means disgraceful, disobedient, not it down. Whenever any child, any of them, uh, becomes a disrespectful, disobedient person, she has to improvise to create, quickly create something. She quickly creates something of a festival nature. What is the idea of festival nature? With some happiness, with some delight. Now, when you go to a festival, uh, when you go to see Vesak festival, you have that happiness, that delight. That is festival nature, delight created by some action. A festival nature, uh, from this delight, from this happiness, the offender, offender means wrong child, bad child, wrong doer. Now in this case, Nicholas. Nicholas is the offender. Rondo, disgraceful child, would be rigorously, seriously, rigorously means seriously debarred. Debarred means kept away, stopped, hmm? interrupted, or debarred. Now, Nicholas is debarred, stopped, enjoying this happiness of this festival nature. What is the festival nature here? Going to Jagboro Beach. Going to Jagboro Beach is some action of festival nature. Now Nicholas is kept away from this uh, happy moment by the son as a punishment. Now this is aunt's common quality, her habit, natural habit. What is this natural habit? When children or one child is disobedient, uh, she rewards the other children. Uh, what is the reward? A reward of a picnic or some other thing uh, for the good children and the bad children or bad child also have to stay at home. This punishment is common. Common. She does this very often. Hmm. She does this very often. What is the fun? What is the fun? What is the fun? That is her habit. If all the children sinned, sin means behaved badly, uh, according to aunt. If, they all, if all the children are sinners, they sin collectively together. If all children are bad, they were suddenly informed of a circus. Now aunt say, okay, you are very bad today. There is a circus in the nearby town. Hmm. A circus of unrivaled merit. Ah, it's a circus with much fun. Unrivaled merit means much fun. And uncounted elephants. Ah, in the circus, there are so many elephants. This is a lie. <laughs> Why? In a circus, there can be only one elephant or two elephants. 
but you cannot find a herd of elephants, so many elephants, because elephants are very big animals. <laughs> right? Now, aren't exaggerate things to impress children. There are so many elephants in that circus. There is much fun, but I don't take you there because for their depravity, for their depravity, their breach of depravity means breaking laws, disgraceful behavior, right? If they were not disgraceful, disobedient, they would have been taken that very day. If you had been good children, I could have taken you, but I can't help because you are all bad today. Hmm? There is a circus. In that circus, there are so many elephants, but I cannot take you there because you are all bad today. Right. Now, in this paragraph, Saki mainly focuses on aunt's character, her way of punishing children, her way of upbringing, upbringing children, right? Through punishments, her main tool is punishment, criticism, sometimes hatred. She has no love for these children. Hmm. No love, no kindness, no sympathy. She has only criticism and punishments. Criticism and punishments. Right. That's the main idea of this paragraph. We go to next page. Now, according to Aunt's punishment, uh, everything is ready for the picnic. Now, other children are getting ready for this uh, festival nature, happy moment. A few decent tears underlined were looked for on part of Nicholas when the moment for the departure of this expedition arrived, underline. This is aunt's expectation, hope. What does she expect? What does she hope? Some tears, good tears, few decent tears. Now, Nick, <coughs> Nicholas is expected to cry. Aunt thinks, aunt hopes that Nicholas must cry now when other children get ready to go on the picnic. Why? If Nicholas cries, aunt's punishment is successful. Now, Nicholas must cry. Then Nicholas and Andon. And what? Again, Dandu was a heart attack. Therefore, Aunt expects Nicholas tears. When the moment for departure, departure means leaving the expedition. What is the expedition? What is the idea? Expedition means picnic. Picnic to Jagborough Beach. Not them down. Put knots because they are questioned in your context questions. What is this expedition? Uh, the picnic to Jagborough Beach. Now, aunt expects Nicholas to cry. Hmm? Therefore, she is looking at Nicholas' eyes. She does not look at those children. She does not think of other children. Hmm. As a matter of fact, as a result of this, as a matter of fact, however, all the crime was done by his girl cousin, uh, you see. 
Nicholas does not cry. Who cries? <laughs> Girl Kasi. Ah, this is an ironic situation. The aunt expects Nicholas to cry, but Nicholas does not cry. Instead of Nicholas, the girl cousin cries. Ah, aunt is quite unhappy. She never expects the girl cousin to cry, but now she cries. Why? Who scraped, hurt, who scraped, bruised, B R U I S E D, bruised, Suragan again, her knee rather painfully against the step of the carriage as she was scrambling in, getting in, scrambling. When this girl, cousin, little girl, is trying to get in into the horse cart, horse carriage, she falls off. She slips her foot and scrapes, wounds, injures her knee. She cries loudly out of pain. Now aunt's expectation does not come true. Nicholas is very happy. How? How she did howl. Howl means cry loudly. How she crowed loudly. Howl, said Nicholas cheerfully, happily. As the party drove off, went off without any elation, delight, elation means, of high spirit, happy hearts. High spirit would have characterized it. Now this Picnic should start, begin with high spirit or happy heart, delightful heart, but it begins with a sorrowful, painful situation. Nicholas is very happy hmm? because at the very beginning of the picnic, it appears to be unsuccessful, unhappy, not delightful. She'll soon get over that. But aunt is much worried about this situation and also angry. Now aunt says, no, she will. She means the girl cousin. Forget it. Soon get over means she will recover from it. She will forget it. Said the soy decent aunt. The soy decent aunt. What is this idea? So Edison means the person who calls herself aunt. This is a derogatory or critical uh, metaphor used for the aunt. So Edison aunt. When anda ki 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 it will be a glorious underline. Now aunt comments, no Nicholas, that trip, that picnic will be glorious. Very happy, delightful afternoon for raising about, running, playing about those beautiful sands. Nicholas, you see, those children will really enjoy this picnic running here and there in the beautiful sand beach. How they will enjoy. Those children will enjoy this picnic so much. But Nicholas, you have lost it because of your disobedient behavior. Ah. But Nicholas does not take this seriously. Because Nicholas intelligently knows that this picnic will not be so delightful. He has reasons. Right? Some practical reasons. We know Nicholas is a practical boy. He has imagination and his imaginations are practical. 
Nicholas is rational, logical, not them down. Nicholas qualities. Nicholas is rational. Nicholas is logical. Nicholas is open-eyed. He knows everything. Now, Nicholas says, comments. Please write down, note down. Bobby won't enjoy himself much and he won't raise much either. Now, Nicholas mentioned. Nicholas mentions one reason. Nicholas mentioned one reason which implies this picnic is not going to be enjoyable. What is this reason? Nicholas says, Bobby will not enjoy much because or enjoy much racing, running here and there. Why? His boots are too tight. This is that reason. Bobby will not enjoy this picnic and because Bobby has tight shoes. Bobby has tight shoes. Ah, his boots, boots means shoes. His shoes are very tight. Therefore, Bobby will not run here and there. We know when your shoes are very tight, you cannot walk freely because your feet hurt. Ah. Now Nicholas knows this. What does Nicholas know? Nicholas knows that Bobby's shoes are very tight. But Ann does not know. That is the problem. But the idea, elders pay no attention to children's problem. Note it down. Elders pay no attention to children's problem. They neglect. Lamunge prasna no magarin, no salakarin. That is what Nicholas points out here. Critically points out. Now, Aunt is. Ashamed. At the same time, she is angry about Nicholas. Why didn't he tell me they were hurting? Why didn't Bobby tell me his shoes are hurting? Asked the aunt with some asperity. But Nicholas comments that. Underline. <laughs> he told you twice, aunt. Nicholas told you, complained you twice about the tight shoes. You were not listening. You did not listen. You did not listen to his problem. He told you twice, reported you twice. You often don't listen. You, you normally do not listen when you tell you important things. You, you are not a woman who listen to important things. You listen to unimportant things. You listen to gossip. Now, this is a serious comment on Aunt's character from Nicholas, this young boy. Right? Now, what does Nicholas say? Elders pay less attention to children's needs and desires. Elders are not much concerned about children's needs, problems. That is one reason for this conflict between the two generations. The old generation does not pay much attention to the problem of young generation. Therefore, there is a conflict between elders and children, between mothers and between parents and children. Right? This is the problem. Now, aunt is 
enraged by this comment because it is a truth. It is the truth of this woman. Not only this woman, but all other women. You are not to go into gooseberry garden. Ah. Now she invents the second punishment. What is the second punishment? Nicholas, you cannot go into the gooseberry garden today. Gooseberry garden. Gooseberry garden is a, a, a separate place in Nicholas garden. This gooseberry garden is full of trees and little animals. It's like a small forest. And Nicholas loves this place because it is full of adventures. There are so many trees. There are so many animals. You cannot go into gooseberry garden, Nicholas. It is prohibited for you. Now, in this way, a second punishment comes upon Nicholas for his critical comments on the aunt's true nature. Because elders do not love to hear children's criticism. Hmm. They do not like it. They are not ready to accept their weakness before children. That is their arrogant nature. They are highly arrogant. These elders are highly arrogant. They think they are always the correct. They must not listen to children. And that is an insult for their pride and arrogance. Uh, likewise. Uh, therefore, this aunt too, she does not uh, accept her weakness. She is not open-hearted. Instead, she expresses her anger, hatred against Nicholas by giving him a second punishment. Why not? Why cannot? Why cannot? Why can't I go into the gooseberry garden? Demanded Nicholas. Now answers, because you are in disgrace. Huh? Because you are a disgraceful boy, bad boy. Disrespectful boy. Disobedient boy. You have broken the rules. Therefore, you cannot go into Gooseberry Garden. Stay in home. Said the aunt loftily, angrily, proudly, angrily, she said. Nicholas did not admit. Nicholas did not take this punishment seriously. Ah. Uh, did not admit the flawlessness, correctness. Flawlessness means correctness. Nicholas does not take this decision is as correcting uh, of this reason. Uh, explanation, reasoning means. Now aunt explains Nicholas is a disgraceful boy, therefore he cannot go into gooseberry garden. But Nicholas act, does not accept this. Why? Underline. This is Nicholas' self-confidence. He knows himself very well. He says, no, no, no. He felt perfectly capable. No, I am capable. Capable means I can do. Be able. I am able of being in disgrace. Now Nicholas says, think, I can be a disgraceful boy, bad boy, and I can be in gooseberry garden at the same moment. <laughs> Nicholas is confident that he can be a bad boy and he can go to gooseberry garden 
at the same moment i have that power that quality that ability ah nicholas knows i can do two things together two things together therefore one's punishment and reasoning is useless not useful right i can be a bad boy and if i want i can go to gooseberry garden at the same time his face took nicholas face had an expression look of a considerable obstinacy obstinacy means not listening in discipline a uh, disobedient look now nicholas showed no i will not obey you i will not listen to you his face look so i will not listen to your punishment i will go to gooseberry garden if i want now uh, it was clear to his aunt even this aunt understands that he was determined nicholas is ready determined nicholas is ready to get into the gooseberry garden to go into the gooseberry garden now even this aunt knows nicholas will never listen to her orders her punishments because he is obstinate a stubborn boy obstinate means stubborn boy therefore aunt knows he will definitely go into gooseberry garden because i have told him not to i ask him not to go there i know he will go there even aunt understands right now in this way we can see the conflict between nicholas and his aunt develops develops keeps developing keeps developing right they are doing tit for tat tit for tat ekka ekka karo tit for tat ah even the aunt behaves like a child hmm behaves like a child not as an adult okay that is the main uh, idea and and comment on this uh, section of the short story uh, i think you must have understood it you must have understood it uh, 